Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. This is the latest Manchester United news. It's a match day, lots to talk about, but we're going to be starting off talking about about a little bit of a tweet interaction I had with, uh, I nearly called him Sir Gary Neville. I'm sure he will be a sir at some point, but uh, with Gary Neville yesterday, and effectively there was a tweet that went out where basically I, I just said something along the lines of, um, in fact, I've got it in front of me here. Basically, it was a bit of something going on on Twitter and he basically, I said, so when you talk about United now, should everyone ignore it? Because you're basically saying that you're biased because it's a mate and that's what people take issue with, you know? And he said, yes, please ignore me, which is obviously a very angry reaction from Gary because I've basically called him out and I think I've taken a massive risk and I don't feel like I've called him out personally. I think I've done it on behalf of what I think is really important and what a lot, a, lot, a lot of United fans are feeling at the moment. And the first thing I want to say is that loyalty is absolutely one of the most commendable attributes in life and his loyalty to Oli is, is fantastic. But I just think that there's a bigger picture here and already my point's been proven that we need a big voice in relation to what's going on at Manchester United, not just in relation to how crap we're playing, but also in relation to the Glazers as well. And that loyalty is an emotional blackmail and the Glazers have played a clever game. The reason Gary or everybody else has been loyal to Ollie is their own reason, but the Glazers have placed this perfectly to protect themselves. And I feel that Gary and everyone else is falling into that trap. But we'll talk about that in a minute because I do want to respond to this. And I feel that my point's been proven, even though I've getting, I'm getting a lot of criticism and the typical sort of Forest fan nonsense from people who just don't like us because we're not from Manchester. So we're going to delve into that and we're going to respond in the grown up mature way that it was meant to be in the first place. Um, I'm certainly not rattled or rumbled by this. And I think it's sad that, you know, Gary's obviously happy to sit down when he's paid to talk to Carragher about Manchester United, who's not even a United fan. But when United fans have got something to say, he throws his toys out of the pram and starts saying, please ignore me, which I think is a shame because ultimately we're not going to ignore you. And the reason we're not going to ignore you is because you've got a very big voice and people want you to be a voice. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, I just want to say, and I'm sure One Football are very happy to be a partner on this show. Uh, the season is full, in full swing and what fo One Football is here to make sure you've got everything you need to keep up to date with the latest football action. I'm sure you guys have heard me mention One Football before. It's a great place for all your latest transfer news, football news, stats, player ratings, etc. We're amongst your favourite club, clubs and leagues across the world. I use it most, almost every day and I've mentioned it to you for a long time. So make sure you download it. It's free to download. The link's in the video description. Um, it's available on Android and Android and you can download it and get all your latest news on there. So big shout out to OneFootball today for sponsoring the show. The link is in the video description there. Please do download it. Right, let's get on with the show. Uh, we might be appearing on OneFootball at some point. But look, at the end of the day, let me just say this. As I said, I took a big risk on that tweet, but I think in life, when you believe in something, it's worth taking a risk. I thought it through, you know, that tweet was there from Gary and I thought, if I reply to this, I'm probably going to get quite a lot of interaction. He might even read it. He did read it and he reacted angrily to it. You know, telling me to ignore him in the future is basically him. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's basically him. Doesn't like me. Basically piss off and leave me alone. That's what I've interpreted that as. That's a big risk to do that when you're talking about somebody I've got huge respect for. Manchester United legend, done amazing things in his career afterwards. To put myself on the line and do it for you, I'm not, I, don't want, I don't want a bravery award, but it, it took a bit of thinking. But I thought, you know what? I can't be a hypocrite. I can't sit here on this show and say, I don't like the Glazers' ownership. I don't like the way we're playing football. I feel the standards are being lowered at this football club. I can't do that. I know there's a lot of other outlets that will do that because it's Gary and you know Rio and everyone like that. And and I know I'm, I'm putting a big target on my head by doing that. And look, I've had a load of abuse last night. You know, Forest fan. Gary, why are you replying to a Forest fan? I mean, look, the, the, it proves my point. It proves my point. Gary Neville says something and loads of people just believe it. Gary is a red and all this lot. So he can say anything. And that's the point I'm making here. My point's been proven. The reason I, may, I did that tweet and I felt it was important is because I don't think we are getting a fair, unbiased analysis of the situation with Manchester United. And I'm to, I'm not, I don't want an Ollie out thing. I don't know why people think this is Ollie in or Ollie out. What I want is standards at the level they're meant to be. Standards at the level. Paul Scholes, Rio Ferdinand and Gary Neville were talking about three years ago under Mourinho but have forgotten because their mate's in charge. That's the conversation I'm having. I'm not Ollie out. I've said if we lose against Liverpool, I probably will be. But right now I'm not. So I'm not arguing with Gary. I'm not arguing at all with anybody. I'm just trying to get that point across. And it's a big risk. And the club don't like us anyway. They've never liked us and I don't really care. The club should open the doors to outlets like this. We're a huge community and we do the club a lot of good. 
we just want the club to be successful. The club just want to make money. And I couldn't give a toss what the club think because I know what they think and I know what they think of us. And it's their loss. They're lost completely. They just think, ignore fans, and, and they're wrong to do that. So the club doesn't bother me. It does bother me when it's ex-legends, like people like Gary Neville, but I've never met the guy. I don't know what he's like. He's certainly never met me. I imagine being Manchester-based, he's spoke, spoken to the same people that have had a problem with this for years. They've spread a load of lies, and Gary probably believes it. And how can you judge somebody you've never met before? Oh, he's quite animated on a camera. I'm not, I'm not this. I'm not like this in a pub. I'm not like get me a bloody pint, Gary. You prat. That's not what. That's not. I'm not what I'm like. So, to judge, per, to, to to have an issue with somebody when you've never met them, I always find that quite, um, quite immature. But at the end of the day, I've obviously pissed him off with that tweet. But I don't feel that that tweet I've put out there was me. I know when I wrote it, I felt as if I was I was doing something that needed to be done. I felt as if it was thousands, maybe even millions of voices that were behind me, because. It's about standards. That's all I'm talking about. It's about standards. And as I say, the loyalty that Gary Neville is showing to, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Rio and everyone else, I, I applaud it. Loyalty is a very big thing for me. I do applaud it. But the problem is, and the reason we can't ignore it, and he can, he can tweet me and tell me to ignore it all you like. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm, you know, one positive this morning, I've not been blocked yet. <laughs> but um, is I'm not going to ignore it. Because the whole, po it, to me, that reply is, is a petulant reply. We're not going to ignore it. You're everywhere, mate. You're on Monday Night Football. You're on, you're, on, you're on the match. You're on the radio. You do a podcast. You're probably the biggest voice for Manchester United. And I don't think your voice, in my opinion, is the voice that's going to help us at the moment. Because I think it's, you're, in the, you're, in an, you're locked in emotionally. And you're not being as unbiased as you could be. Because I heard what you said about Mourinho. We've heard what Skull said about Mourinho. We've heard what Rio said about Mourinho. We've heard about the standards at this football club. We've heard you go in on the Glazers. But right here, right now, the standards are what I'm talking about. And look, as I said, you'll get people sticking up for Gary going, he's a top red, you're a fake Forest fan or whatever like that. And I've already won. I've won then, haven't I? We've won because that's my point. Gary Neville's voice is bigger than anybody's. So if he's telling people that the Europa League's fine, FA Cup top four's fine, there's nothing, you know, the football's not that bad, then, well, if he's if he, if he's a top red and everything like that, you're going to believe that. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that top four and a Europa League and an FA Cup is good enough with the squad that we've got in year three. I don't believe that that Leicester performance at the weekend was good. I think it's one of the worst performances we've ever seen. And remember, I mean, I think I think it was either Paul Scholes or Gary Neville sometime in the last year responded to a Van Hal article sticking up for Ollie and said, I don't know what he's on about. The football under Van Hal is the worst we've ever seen. I disagree. So if you're going to have a conversation about what the worst football's been of the last eight years, why are we not having that conversation now? And all I want, and I don't, and I think, I don't think I'm alone with this, I, all I want is... We're in a really bad situation. We've got a match tonight. I want us to win. I want us to beat Liverpool and I want us to come back. That's what I want. But I, what I also want is that when we lose like we did to Leicester at the weekend, where we got absolutely hammered, I want to see these big United voices speaking openly and honest about what was an absolute shambles. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come out in an interview and said, in relation to the Leicester result... Um, you know, we've, we've, we might have to, uh, you know, it might be about personnel, it might be about injuries, rotation's important. It's not about personnel, it's not about injuries, it's about tactics, mate. I don't, you, you had Paul Pogba and Matic in the midfield, they're very, very good. You had Ronaldo and Bruno on the pitch, Mason Greenwood was on the pitch, Jaden Sancho's on the pitch. You had a very good side, it's not about personnel and injuries. What are you going to say now, I needed Cavani instead of Ronaldo, I needed Fred instead of Pogba? It's not about personal and injuries. It's about bad tactics. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the standards. I know absolutely categorically, if Jose Mourinho was in charge, that the outpouring from some of these ex-players would be exactly the same as what you've been doing for the last few days. And that's what I'm talking about, is that the reason I decided to do that tweet, and it was a big risk, is because I'm frustrated about the lack of analysis around what is a terrible start to the season with terrible football when we've got the best squad we've had in a long time. And also the adaption from that, that some of these ex-players are saying, given the season, the Europa League final, Europa League win would be great. 
We're not even in the Europa League. Paul Scholes said it three years ago. You only go in the Europa League because you're not good enough for the Champions League. We're in the Champions League. So to me, it's just about standards. That's all it's about. All it's about. It's not about Oli in or Oli out. For some of you, it will be that. I'm not Oli out, so I can't help you with that. It's about the standards for me. I feel that these big voices, which we're not going to ignore because they're everywhere and they are paid good money as respected ex-players of our football club, ex-legends, well, no, legends of our football club. They paid a lot of money to talk about our football club. And at the moment, I feel they're emotionally locked in some, into something that benefits only one person. Not the not Ollie, the Glazers. Well, there's no, more than one person. The Glazers have positioned Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer there purposely to protect them. We've been talking about this for three for three years. Ollie was given the job because they loved the song Ollie's at the Wheel. They saw the momentum and they were like, "This is going to protect us." And they're very, 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 very happy with that. Even though the, they don't know about football, so they're not they don't realise that we can't win the league. They think that gets decided in May. They won't really realise that we can't win the league now. So. Ollie's there because the Glazers want him to be there. He protects the Glazers. And then you've got these ex-players protecting Ollie. And therefore, we're just stuck in this situation where the only people who are vocal about it are the fans and bloody Jamie Carragher, who's a Liverpool legend, not a United legend. So I, that's why I put the tweet out. And I'm very grateful that Gary responded to it because although I've had a load of abuse for it, there's actually been quite a lot of people who've messaged me who said, look, I don't even like the United stand, but I do think you're right to call it out because at the moment, there's not really anybody apart from fans talking about the situation and that's all I want to do and I think that's all you want to do as well because it is a terrible start to the season one point from nine in the last three games in the league terrible football that should be being called out that should be being discussed all I want is an ex-player and I don't care who it is probably get Paul Ince to say it tomorrow but the reality is all I want is an ex-player to come out and say that the football is diabolical what's going on in the coaching what Solskjaer actually doing why is he treating Donny van der Beek like that? And why are we out of a title race pretty much in mid-October when we're meant to be a title contender? It's not good enough and he needs to sort it out now. That's not saying Ollie out, but nobody's doing it. And what that does when um, an ex-player does it is with Gravitas, is it absolutely resonates through the fan base and the media and everyone goes, shit, he's gone in hard. And Solskjaer hears about it. And Solskjaer goes, shit, I'm under real pressure now. And he needs to be under pressure because what are we going to get tonight? Are we going to get a back five? If we get a back five, what the hell is he doing? I'm not saying it won't work, but it's not his idea. Back five's not how he wants to play. It's pure desperation. If we get McTominay and Fred tonight and we grind a win out, that's not progression. We've been doing it for a year. We can grind out results with McTominay and Fred, but we're never going to win the league. And this is what I mean. Nobody wants to delve into those conversations because they're emotionally attached and protecting something. But I'm telling you now, I don't care whether you're Paul Scholes, Gary Neville, Rio Ferdinand, Rio, Robin Van Persie, Roy Keane. If you are actually watching these games, they've played the bloody game. They know how United play. They're watching that game against Leicester. Privately, they, privately, they are 100% going, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? We've got no identity, people. Brentford have an identity. Brighton have an identity. Aston Villa have an identity. We've got no identity. And that's what's frustrating, people, is that we're not hearing this from the respected ex-players in the media. We're not hearing this, and we know they think it, and we know they know it, but they're not breaking it down. They're not going in and going, what are they doing on the training ground? What are they doing? They look like strangers. There is no pattern. It's amateur. It belongs on a pub team. But they won't do it because it's disrespectful to their mates. And that's the thing. That's what we're talking about. It's not about being Ollie in or Ollie out. They, they've got the power to say all that. And basically, it might be a light bulb moment for Ollie to go, fucking hell, I've, I've been thrown under the bus there. What is going on with the coaching? You know, and, and, and I just think at the moment, it's too lenient. It's too diluted. Apart from fans. And look, I'll be honest, we as fans get filed in the drawer of hysteria. The club have a drawer where they put fan opinion and it's locked away and it's hysterical. They don't believe in that. But what they do, they do listen to ex-players and that is why they're important. And that is why, Gary, I will not be ignoring you because your voice is very big. And that is why I took that risk of saying I didn't agree with what you were doing because I think you have got a big voice. And I think that 
you're not really talking about the big issues that are, you can't be saying Europa League is a, is a successful season. We're in the Champions League and we're meant to be contending for a title. And where is the deep frustration at the way we're playing football? We're playing terrible and you know it. You know we're playing terrible. Where's the calling out of what is happening on the coaching ground? Where's the calling out of why is he not using certain players? And you don't have to do it, but you're in the public eye. You're a legend of the club. You've got a massive voice. And we can say, why aren't you doing it? Because that's what you're paid for, mate. You're paid to put a public opinion out there. And I learned this six years ago. Lots of people give me shit and I'm nowhere near on the level you are. And if somebody comes back at you and doesn't, you don't like it, coming back with just ignore me, it's not really much of a response. And as I said, you'll sit there and talk to Jamie Carragher, your mate, who's a Liverpool legend, and he can slag you off and he can take the piss out of you, but a United fan does it. And I'm not even talking about me. And it's like, oh, I, 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 you go on the defensive. It's like... Pfft. You know, people say, well, why don't you sit and have a chat with me? Well, you won't do it, will you? I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not call. I know that happened with AFTV. I'm not that person. I'm not going to call you out to have a chat or anything like that. The reality is I want what's best for Manchester United. I'm sure you do. And I'm sure the ex-players do. But I think at the moment, to be blunt, I think you're being emotionally blackmailed by the Glazers. I think they've got you because you love Ollie. And you don't want to be disloyal, which is fantastic, but that suits the Glazers, of which you've been very vocal about. This football club, at the moment, the standards are dropping year on year. How can you be saying three years ago we should be winning a title, three years later, the Europa League would be a good season, and yet we've got the best squad we've had in probably 10 years? Mark, Neville doesn't care about United like we do. He cares about his friends. United gave him a career. You're more a top red mate than morons, says uh, Andy and Bruno. I disagree. I disagree. This is a guy who's played for the club, won everything with the club and um, is a legend of the club. I think he does care about Manchester United. I just think he's emotionally locked into something where he can't be honest on it. And I think that there's a few players like that. As I said, for me, this is uh, this is not a beef. This is <laughs> I'm completely respectful and mature enough to have a conversation. As I said, there are there are. There are definitely 100% people out there that will just be very angry about this um, and be like, oh, you know, what's this Forest fan? I mean, Gary, Gary may as well tweet, shut up, Forest fan, because he'd he get loads of retweets on that. But that proves my point. It proves my point. He's got a very powerful voice and can basically say anything and people will just jump along with it. And, and that's my point. The standards of Manchester United is what I'm interested in. And... I'll keep saying it. If we all dream the same dream and we want the same thing, it's about getting Manchester United back where Liverpool are, back where Man City are. And we're bloody miles off at the moment. And I hope, 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 hope Oli can be the man. But personally, I think we all know it's very unlikely that he is going to be the man. And these conversations do need to happen. So, look, I'm not... That's my response. We're going to talk about what Oli said and we're going to talk about the game now. But my response is not about getting into a beef. It was a risky tweet to do. Um, I stand by it because I felt that it, you know, in life you've got to, if you really truly believe in something, you've got to. And I haven't spent my life supporting Manchester United, and I haven't spent my time night after night chatting to you, good people, about passionately about this club, from things like backup right backs to when is the stadium going to get built. I don't spend time talking about that to then not spend time you know, being honest about how I feel about this situation. The football is a disgrace. The start to the season is diabolical. The squad is fantastic and we're massively underachieving. Standards, that's all I'm wanting to hear about. And at the moment, I just feel it's swept under the carpet. Oh, you know, give it time, give it time. And it's like, well, we didn't give Mourinho time. We didn't give Van Hal time. And, you know, going back to what I said before, whoever said it, whether it was Gary, whether it was Scalzi, whether it was Robin Van Persie, somebody said in the last year... Van Hal said something about Solskjaer and somebody came out and said Van Hal should shut his gob because basically his football's the worst we've ever seen. And that was an ex-player who said that, defending Oli. I'm sorry, if they're going to come out with a statement like that, they should be retracting it now and saying, I was wrong. That's the football worst football I've ever seen. Because this, this season's the worst football I've seen from United. It's been terrible. For the players we've got, we are playing absolutely diabolical. And I hope there's going to be a spark tonight. I really do. But um, And I think we will win tonight. There has to be a response. Listen to Solskjaer's comments yesterday. He said that, you know, um, what was he said? He said, we've got, we need lots of energy. Uh, the fans are behind us. We've got the best fans in the world. He ain't stupid. He needs those fans at Old Trafford. And they will be behind him. We have got the best fans in the world. They were singing ollies at the wheel at the weekend. They'll do it again tonight. They'll do it again on Sunday. We've got fantastic, loyal fans 
who are giving Solskjaer more loyalty than any manager's had since Sir Alex Ferguson. Moyes didn't get this, Van Hal didn't get this, Jose didn't get this. The reason he gets it is because of his status as a footballer for Manchester United. He's a very, very, very fortunate manager because the, paper, the cracks get papered by our fans because of our emotional attachment to him. And he's using that now. He needs that. He needs that. But it's going to be about how the players respond to this. And as I said before, the... I think the players have got to take responsibility here. They know more than us what's going on. If it's not if it's not good, they need to do what they need to do. And that's all I'm going to say. Mark, I'm wondering why Rashford commands such importance at the club that Oli had to explain himself for telling his players to focus on his football, says Devanshu. Well, I, as I said yesterday, my observation of it, and I don't think it's a bad thing, I don't think Oli should have said it about Rashford in the first place, but my observation is that is it's a press conference after a terrible result ahead of the two big games, and the first thing he does before he takes any questions is basically sit there and apologise for talking about Marcus Rashford with Marcus Rashford sat next to him. That showed you the power of Marcus Rashford. That's come from Manchester United. I don't think Oli Gunnar Solskjaer would have ever started this press conference with what was effectively... You know, you know, sorry, Marcus, I didn't mean it in that way. I don't think he would have done that. I don't think Sir Alex Ferguson would have done that. I think the club have told him to do that. And that shows you the power of Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford is bigger than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ronaldo is definitely bigger than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You could probably... How many players at Manchester... Paul Pogba is bigger than, Man uh, than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Bruno is bigger than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's four players who are bigger and more important to Manchester United than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Well, look. We haven't got Gary on the show, but I'm sure if we're having this grown-up conversation, he would agree that that should never be the case. You should never have players that are bigger than a manager. But we have. And that undermines Ollie, and it shows you why he's probably out of his depth. Because we've got numerous players that are more important to the club than Ollie himself. Um, and therefore, he becomes what many people have said. He's a puppet for the Glazers. Remember when the fans broke into Carrington? And Ollie turned up and was like, you know, they're good people, the Glazers. This was immediately after the Super League. Did Oli come out and after the Super League and condemn the Glazers? No, he didn't because he's indebted to the Glazers. So, you know, this is the problem. This is, I suppose we've, we've found a problem here, haven't we? You've got commendable loyalty to Solskjaer from some fans and from uh, some ex-players, but then Solskjaer is loyal to the Glazers. So that loyalty to Oli is loyalty to the Glazers, and that was trying to say. But look, loyalty, I'm never going to knock it. I'm never going to knock the loyalty because I think loyalty in life is a, you know, is a dying thing and, and it's a very important thing. My only point here, and the reason I did that tweet in the first place is I can't knock loyalty to Solskjaer. I cannot knock it. I've been there, but I don't know him, so I don't need to be super loyal. I was loyal to him for a very long time, as you know. Now I'm calling it out because the football's crap. Loyalty is absolutely right. But when all you're getting is loyalty in the media then where's the voice for the other side? And I feel that the, the other side is not being represented. And look, you know what? People, not, people, might, not like, people not, might not like... People might not like fan content. I accept that. You don't have to. You don't have to watch it. Um, if you're offended by it, if you don't like it, don't watch it. There's loads of stuff I don't watch. But what we've seen in the last five years is that social media is getting bigger and bigger and I'm proud to look on social media and see not all conversations I think some of it's nonsense you know the abuse that Ollie gets and you know the, the, the deluded you know things the other way but I am proud when I see really deep conversation between people on, on social media about fans and look you might not like this but it's already too late if you don't like it you know for every United stand, for every person like myself, there's already thousands of people doing it and there'll be thousands and thousands more. So it's not going anywhere. If that's what the root of the problem is, if it's ex-players who don't like the fact that fans are getting a voice, well, it's only going to get it's only going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and ultimately, sometimes opinions are right, sometimes people's things are wrong. I just feel it's too important to ignore the fact that the standards at this football club are dropping. And they're dropping for a lot of reasons. And I think they're also dropping because there's an emotional attachment to the current coaching setup where people won't call them out, but it's dropping the standards as well. These people, you know, I'm not saying to sack Ollie, but if there was really big scrutiny about the tactics and everything, then maybe that would force change um, amongst Ollie. Mark, if Ollie, were, I mean, look, Donny van der Beek should start the game tonight. I'll say that right, right. I'll say it again. It won't happen, but Donny van der Beek should start. Our midfield has been a catastrophe all season, and he plays in the midfield, and he, he costs £35 million. Any logical manager gives him a chance tonight. 
Will it happen? No. Mark, if Ollie wins, he stays. However, if we change, do we go for another Chelsea reject in Conte or Zidane, says Kojak. Uh, Gary only shifts the blame because he knows he has a big voice and he doesn't want to be the one of the reasons why one of these mates loses their job, says Bradley. But yeah, no, he never wanted Mourinho to get the sack. He's, I, I, I don't think he's the sort of person who would call for the sack of anybody. And I don't think anybody should be calling for him to get the sack, for him to, to say, give him, get the sack. It's just all I all I would like to see is somebody saying in the media it's unacceptable not to be challenging for the title by Christmas. And that looks like it's going to happen. It's unacceptable to be just focusing on an FA Cup and fourth place. That's not good enough. That's a step backwards. It's unacceptable to be playing this level of football. I mean, these are logical, obvious things to discuss that aren't being discussed. Remember, we finished second last last season and got to Europa League final. If we're now going to accept fourth and an FA Cup and another Europa League final, when we've got Ronaldo, Varane and Sancho added to the team, that's a step backwards, isn't it? The standards are dropping. How are the standards going to change when we, the club, is run and managed by mediocre people? I'm afraid we will be in this slump for a while, says Venkat. Well, I was talking to somebody about this this morning. Um, as per Ollie's comments, we need, we need more legs. That's, that means we are going to see more McFred. Oh, I guarantee they'll start tonight. I think we'll win tonight. We'll probably win with McFred tonight. And I feel sorry for those fans that if we do win tonight, they're straight on social media saying Ollie's back at the wheel. You know, people give McFred too much stick. McFred can do a job. We finished second last year with them. They can do a job. But the conversation we had in the summer is we'll never win a league with McTominay and Fred. McTominay and Fred are a security blanket for Ollie that he puts in to protect his defence to not concede goals. If you want a team that's just going to grind out top four every year, McTominay and Fred are your man and Ollie's your man. But the st we're talking about standards again, aren't we? People will celebrate that because it's better than losing to Leicester. But we're meant to be up where Man City and Liverpool are now. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a home where we were last year, which is grinding out, not great football, to finish third or fourth. Hello, Mark. With all the Zidane and Conte rumours, would you consider Gerard Vieira taking charge of Manchester United? Keep up the good work. You're having a laugh, MD. Never going to happen. I like a game of chess and the players have moved all their pawns to protect themselves, the Queen. They're in total control, says Joshua Bowwater. Look, we've got a massive game tonight. I think I think we will win tonight because, to be honest with you, I cannot see, and I, I can't see, I don't know about you, but I can't see a, a, a world where we lose tonight or even draw tonight. You know, it's so hard to predict the future, especially in football, but I can't imagine a world where we don't win tonight. We literally have to win. It's not a nice to win. It's not a must win. It's a have to win. You have to win tonight. We have to find a way. And look, we did it against Villarreal. I don't know how we managed that. So the game's never dead at Old Trafford, especially in a European tie. So I think we will win tonight. I think I actually think we'll win it. I predicted a draw, didn't I? I, th I think Atalanta have got a few problems. And I think um, it's all about energy, says the Man United app, says Stephen Hunt. I mean, this is not tactics, though, is it? This is not tactics. All Ollie ever talks about is energy, desire and trust. I mean, he describes McTominay and Fred as energy, desire and trust. And he's talking about energy again. I'm telling you now again, one of these ex-players would destroy Mourinho for that. Is that, what's energy? What's energy? And, you know, we've said this before. What the fuck is energy? Like, I'm fed up of here. The standards, again, they're just dropping. Ah, I'm going to be oh, squashed. I'm squashed. Ah, no, no. I'll be doing the show like this soon. Hello and welcome to the United Stand. The standards are almost on the floor completely now. Um, you soon won't be able to hear me. I'll be a voice in the cellar because the standards are dropping so much at this football club. But we're all accepting it and we're all having a great time. Can't get up now. But, but the reality is, my serious point here is, and again... People won't like me because I'm not from Manchester and all that stuff. We know that you're a Forest fan, everything like that. And if you believe that, you're just a sheep because you're just doing something because you don't like the show. Everybody should agree with what I'm about to say, whether they like me, whether they like the community or whatever. This is bang on and you know it is. Manchester United should not be talking about energy. If I'm a player at United and I hear a manager talking about passion, desire, trust and energy, I know all I've got to do to get in his team is run around a lot. This should come as standard. Do you ever hear Pep Guardiola talking about energy? 
Does Kevin De Bruyne get in the team because he runs around a lot? No. Because it comes as standard with the top players who are coached well. Running around is part of your job. It should come as a standard. If that is part of your team talk, they're not United players. They don't need to be told to run around with lots of energy. They shouldn't be at the fucking football club if they can't do that. Roy Keane, Gary Neville, Ryan Giggs, Paul Ince, Paul Scholes, Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, Eric Cantona, Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney. Keep naming United players over the last 25 years. They all knew when they put that shirt on, you run around a lot for 90 minutes and then you express yourself with your footballing ability. We're now championing. You know what that energy is all about? It's so that when we win today and McTominay puts a shift in, we can all go, whoa, he gets it. Oh, he gets it. He gets it. He's, he's the, that's the thing. Ollie wants you to think about energy because then the players he puts in the team that run around, you can go, he's right. He's right, you know. Look at the energy. I'm telling you that's why the standards have dropped at this football club. I don't want to hear about energy. I don't want to hear about desire. You put me in a Man United shirt or you put you in a Man United shirt and say you're playing centre mid tonight, I'll last two minutes before they have to bloody stretch me off. But I'll run around like an absolute prat because the pride and passion to wear that shirt would be immense. Why the hell are we as Man United fans being fed energy? We need energy. I like energy. I like desire. I like trust in a United shirt. It should come as standard. We should be talking about when Ollie's talking about McTominay and Fred, he shouldn't be saying, I like them because of their energy, trust and desire. He should be talking about them. I like Scotty's positional sense. I like the way he picks the ball up and sees a pass. I like the way he can change the game. I like the way he breaks into the box past Bruno and can score a goal. With Fred, I love his tenacity. I love the way he covers the ground and bites into the tackle and wins his back possession. I love the way he protects the back four. I love the way he reads the game and picks up runners into the box. Oh my God, I've just spoken about football. Do we ever hear that? No, we hear about energy. Now, look, that comes with a warning. I've not actually described McTomney and Fred there. I've, I've described what I'd like them to do. But you know what? Energy in this lot, it's a load of nonsense. And we're being mugged off and the standards are dropping. And the people who are stood above all this, like this, the puppet masters are the Glazers. They're like this. They're loving this. Energy. Yeah, we could probably get a t-shirt with Ronaldo on it, with energy on it. That will sell for Christmas. It's, it's what it's all about. It's, and look, don't let it be lost on you. Ed Woodward may be being kept on. Richard Arnold is going to be the new chief exec. We knew this for months. Nothing changes at United. It's the status quo. It's mates' rates. Woodward steps aside and somebody who's been there for years steps in. The incompetence continues and manifests itself and continues to infect this football club. And they will not open the door. They will not change. They will not bring specialism in. And they definitely won't bring people in who are going to say, this is not acceptable, that's not acceptable. Which is why they don't like us. They don't really like us. Because ultimately, what do we do? What do we do? We speak the truth and we want we want the high standards. But high standards cost money and they're there to make money. That's why they don't like it. They want to be left alone to make money and get away with it, which is what they've been doing for 16 years. They've been getting away with it. They had a manager in Sir Alex Ferguson that could win a title with, a, you know, with scraps um, and they got away with it. And now they're not getting away with it as much, but they're trying to create a situation where they can keep getting away with it. I would describe the Glazers as this. They're somebody who won the lottery and are just, you know, they've scammed their way into a position of power and they just, they'll do anything they can to stay in power as long as they can and keep churning the money out, churning the money out. Look, there's loads of films where this happens, you know, where it's like, you know, the bank robbery in, I don't know, Heat or 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 the start of Batman, The Dark Knight Returns or whatever. And they're, they're, they're working to a clock. They're working to a clock. Two minutes and uh, we've only got two minutes. Grab as much money as you can. That's like the Glazers. They know they're on borrowed time, but there's all this money and they're just scooping it up, shoveling it up, grabbing as much as they can for as long as they can because they know they're on borrowed time. They know why they're there. They're there to make money out of this football club and they're on borrowed time and they're trying to make as much money as they can. And they know at some point they'll just walk away, but they don't care. They're not Man United fans. If it all ends tomorrow, they'll walk away and go, we made a shitload of money. They're the puppet masters at the top of all of this. And nobody, nobody in that football club will ever call them out. The only people that do call them out 
to be fair, Gary Neville's done it. You do it all the time. And it's always about standards. And the standards at this football club are not not ne- anywhere near where they need to be. Um, and, and I do think there needs to be some pressure put on the club for that. And there needs to be pressure on, on Oli for that. And his coaching staff, you know, comes out yesterday, says how great his coaching staff is. It's not great. It's not great. Till they start proving themselves on the pitch, how can your coaches be good? Attention to detail. What? Well... If they're so attentive to detail, why why does why does the gap between our defence and attack look like it's a, a bloody ocean? You know, oceans apart. Um, we're tactically inept, and I don't think the players are. Well, I know for a fact the players are not. You know, sod it. You know what? I know for a fact the players are not happy. Certain players are not happy. There's unrest in that dressing room. The club don't want that to be known, but they are. They're not happy. And why would they be happy? The things need to improve and. You know what? The pressure should be put on, and we've got massive games to come, and we expect a response. We don't. We demand a response. We have to win tonight, and we have to win on Sunday. Anything less is not acceptable. Bruce would do better than Ollie. He's free agent now, says Oscar. Has he been sacked? Bruce has been sacked. I told you this was going to happen. I told you this was going to happen. Um, anyway, look. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yes. What I was going to say is this. So. Please smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. We've got Adam's road trip coming up this afternoon and we've got a massive watch along tonight. But just a lot of people are saying, if we beat Liverpool, does that rescue him? Well, if we beat Liverpool, I'm not going to be saying anything other than positive things because I want to beat Liverpool. But if we do beat Liverpool, think of it like this. If we beat Liverpool, we would have four points from 12 because we've taken one point from nine. So add three the three points played for so we'd have four points from 12 if we didn't beat Spurs and we drew we'd have five from 15 and then if Man City beat us we'd have five from 18 so Liverpool on itself doesn't solve a massive problem if you beat Liverpool you've got to beat Spurs and City that's the challenge but we can only take it game by game got to beat Atalanta got to beat Liverpool got to beat Spurs got to beat Man City he needs four wins to really start to turn the tide one win, a draw and a loss will just bring us back to where we are now. So that's the challenge. And if he's not up for that challenge and only the players will know, then that's down to them, isn't it? Why are we not talking about problems in playing style or slow midfield? Why no one in the media asking right questions of Ollie, Ollie out and don't, don't matter? Says United. Well, this is what I mean. This is what this is exactly what I mean. I don't want these ex-players to say Ollie out. I want them to start calling out why it's acceptable to have a Europa League at the end of this season when we're not even in it. Why is it acceptable to play crap football with crap tactics? They know all this. They should talk about it. Anyway, look, thanks everyone for watching. I will see you a little bit later on. Really enjoyed the show. And as I said, look, it was a risk, but it's a risk I stand by. I'm more than happy to have this conversation with any of this lot, but they'll never allow it to happen because they don't want to be in a position where people are asking them these sort of questions. That's not what my end game is. My point was just to you know, bring awareness to the fact that the standards of this football club are low. I don't want ex-players shouting Ollie out. That's not what I want. I'm not doing it myself, so I can't ask for that. What I did do and why I did it is that I just feel that they're emotionally attached to something that benefits the Glazers and it doesn't benefit Manchester United. There needs to be a conversation about why our standards are being lowered and I believe they're allowing it to low, be lowered. That's why I said it. Nothing more. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. And as I said, loyalty is a massive thing, so I can't knock that. But I, but I still think you need to call it out and try and create the debate. Um, massive shout out to One Football as well. Make sure you download it. Links in the video description. Uh, download it for free. I'll speak to you all in a bit. Thanks for watching. Massive game tonight.